Today, I want to talk about something that is a little difficult to talk about as a business owner, as a person trying anything really. And that is failure. That is giving up, uh, realizing what your priorities are. And I've had to go through a lot of that recently. So I want to share some of those stories and share with you how I still think it's possible to find success in those moments. Hello there and welcome. My name is Brian and I'm a business owner. I own several businesses, two of which are Amazon stores. Uh, this whole online uh, persona platform is also a business and I've tried other businesses in the past as well. And what I've decided to do ever since COVID struck was help lower the barrier of entry into owning your own business, turning your passions, turning what you're good at into a monetization strategy, into a fully fledged business. And it was just something that called out to me. If you've caught any videos in the past, you probably already know this story. I just saw too many people struggle when, when COVID hit, they didn't have a backup plan. They didn't have multiple streams of income. They didn't have a way to cushion that blow. And I felt with my experience, I could help lower that barrier. So here we are. And this is yet another video where hopefully, you're gonna be able to pull a few nuggets from. Maybe learn from some of my mistakes so that you don't make those same mistakes. And that's, I think the best lesson any one person can give to another is a map, <laughs> is some, some guidance in the hopes that they don't make the same mistakes or even if they do make those same mistakes, that the impact of those mistakes isn't as great as maybe I've experienced. And so, with that in mind, I do want to chat a little bit about some of my failures, some of things I've had to give up on in reorganization of priorities. And if you've been following along, you've, you've probably uh, remember I used to go under my gamer tag, which was half pump. I went under that for years, years and years. One of my original concepts for this whole digital personality, this digital platform I've I put together was I wanted to be a Twitch streamer. I wanted to be a gaming personality. Not that that part of me has left or gone anywhere. It just wasn't as relatable as leveraging my personal my brand, my personal experiences and building businesses and just working in the professional world in in sales and in um, professional services and, and uh, consultative type roles where I've helped, you know, fortune 100 companies make really big decisions based on analysis in, and looking at all of the moving pieces to really help guide them or Sherpa them into a, the right decision for their organization and fundamentally affect their direction as an organization. And, Keeping that in mind, I, I applied a lot of what I learned in my professional career to some of my hobbies, some of my passions, which was, you know, I wanted to be a Twitch streamer. I wanted to be a gamer and, and grow this, this platform, a, a YouTube channel that had my gaming content on it. I, I even went so far as to create a traveling streaming and tournament sort of service where I went around in my local city and hosted fighting game tournaments for um, various fighting game communities. And I had a passion for fighting games and I still have a passion for fighting games. And I did that for, for about a year. And I realized at, at one point that I was really putting a lot of my gear and a lot of myself at risk for, for very little payoff. I think I positively um, affected the community, which was great, but I just personally couldn't continue that endeavor, especially with a lot of personal changes that were occurring in my life. So I had to step away from that. I considered that a big failure. It was something I was super excited about, something I was really interested in was 
subsidizing my at home streaming with a, a passion I had for fighting games and the fighting game community and bringing those quality streams to those tournaments and not only running the tournaments, and, but I was also providing all the streaming equipment, putting the broadcast together, doing a lot of the editing of the videos afterwards, uploading the, the whole gamut. And it was a process I really enjoyed, but I couldn't do it. I had to shift priorities and focus a little bit more on my, my personal life at that time. And I did feel like I gave up a bit. I, I felt like I gave up on that particular community. I gave up on myself, my dreams, some of my passions I had. And I think if I would have stuck with it, things could have been really interesting. They, they could have been maybe in some form or fashion where I wanted them to be as, as maybe commenting or, or comment, commentating, I should say, uh, uh, on fighting games, something I really enjoy. I love watching fighting game tournaments and listening to the commentators and um, giving that analysis. And that was something I also enjoyed doing. And if I would have stuck with it, maybe that could have been somewhere or something different. And then that brings me back to the whole general Twitch stream. I, I jumped back into Twitch streaming earlier this year and was super excited about it and uh, put a decent amount of time into it, probably three months of streaming really consistently. Um, this didn't compare to the year uh, that I put in prior and, and then took a several years off and then came back and was like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna jump into streaming. And I realized, although I did enjoy streaming, I, just, I still enjoy the wonderful community that, that followed me even after all of the year, uh, the years of time and, and not, you know, being a streamer and they just came out of nowhere. They're like, hey, welcome back. And I was like, that is the coolest feeling, the coolest thing in the world. And I, I couldn't do it again. I couldn't do it with, with my day job, everything I had going on in my personal life. So things with my house, things with my relationship, things with just my own personal struggles with like the meaning of life. Like what am I doing with myself? Um, really weighed on me and it made it hard to consistently come here, put a smile on my face and stream and put on a show because at the end of the day, that's what it is. Like nobody wants to come in here and have a sour faced individual just sitting on stream going, you know, ha having a poor time of it. And I couldn't continue to do it. But to, alongside of that was this whole YouTube channel. And I went through a rebrand that significantly affected me. I didn't have a ton of subscribers on my YouTube channel before under Half Pump, but I, do, I rolled out a new YouTube channel, changed my branding and my name on my, my Twitter, on my Twitch account, on my Facebook, on my Instagram. I launched a LinkedIn page, um, all of this under a new name, which was great because now all of the platforms are a single name. They're all Brian Bonebreak two on all my platforms because I am a second. I'm Brian Bonebreak the second. Uh, so funny enough, some of those platforms couldn't accept the extra character it needed to be a Roman numeral two. I had to use the number two. It still ended up working out, but now I am the same across all the platforms. So feel free to follow me on those. But I also built this strategy. I built a strategy of dispersing this information, these videos I make, which are the main pillar content of what I'm doing with this digital realm on, on YouTube. And then I would make specific content for Instagram. I was uh, um, formatting that differently for Twitter. I was approaching uh, this LinkedIn strategy of posting the videos out there and putting a, a, a large write-up uh, to, to accompany that. I had a Facebook strategy as well around posting the videos and on the pages. And then I was still even on top of all of that, thinking about podcasts and blogs. And I had to give it up. I failed at those. And that's hard to admit sometime. And the reason was they weren't a priority. I realized where my passion really was, was in making these YouTube videos. They are 
a, a great fit for my personal life, what I'm doing, my schedule, my uh, ability to get this message out in, in my passion in and around building these, these businesses and technology and, and helping individuals get their businesses started. And it doesn't mean that I, I still won't post to Instagram uh, or to Twitter or to, um, to Facebook or LinkedIn, but it, it did mean I had to shift where I had this very robust Twitch strategy that had to fall to the, the wayside. And not to say I'm done streaming on Twitch altogether. I think if I come back, it's going to be after this YouTube channel has evolved a bit more. Uh, as something I've, I've mentioned quite a few times, you have to leverage more discoverable platforms than Twitch to draw an audience into Twitch. And so I think with that, I had to make a very hard choice. And that was, I'm going to be a YouTube content creator. I'm going to use Instagram still as a, another secondary discoverable platform to post more small digestible pieces that, that are shareable. It, so with YouTube and with Instagram, those two strategies, I have two very, or one very concrete strategy and that is create content that people want to share, right? that is useful, that le is uh, that I lead with value. There's not an ask really in my videos. So the only ask I ever <laughs> put out there is to subscribe, to come watch the videos that I have a day job. This isn't, you know, paying my bills. I'm doing this because it's something I'm passionate about. It's something I'm interested in. The only thing I'm really trying to lead with in any of my content is just value. I want to make sure that this is helpful for individuals to, to hear my story, to hear my process, to hear my thoughts on, on doing this thing. I'm building businesses and, and hopefully helping along the way. So I had to fail. I had to give up on some, some platforms to make this work. Cause it was just stretching me too thin to try to you know, post consistently on, on Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook, and then keep a consistent uh, Twitch schedule. And on top of that, produce YouTube videos. And then oh, I don't even know what sort of insanity struck me that thought I could also produce podcasts and blogs, but I heavily explored research and nearly deployed a, a podcast and, and written blog alongside of everything else I was doing. And again, this is not to say I've 100% given up on those. So if you're coming here to this because you found me on one of those platforms, thank you, first of all, and welcome. But it does mean that the strategy is going to change. It, this brings me to my next point is understanding, embracing your failures, knowing when to give up, but also fail forward. Learn from those mistakes, learn what you can and can't do and maintain your sanity while doing that. And that's been a really interesting uh, process I've, I've just kind of gone through where I know that I want to make these YouTube videos and I'm gonna to continue to make these YouTube videos, but I need to settle down <laughs> on some of these other platforms. And until I can create systems that aren't putting a massive burden on myself, I, I don't know if I'll be able to revisit them at the intensity that I was before, not to say that they're going away 100%, but I'm gonna have to come up with a slightly different strategy for those platforms and what I'm gonna do with them. And that's what works for me. Other individuals, it might work for them or they might have the time or the wherewithal to come up with a multi-platform strategy. I always believe that you should have a primary and a secondary platform. The primary flat platform is where you're going to drive people to. So if you're an e-commerce uh, business, then your primary platform is going to be your website where you're selling your products. And then you're going to have a secondary platform or maybe even a tertiary platform that is trying to drive 
traffic there. An easy one for e-commerce companies is simply a Instagram account, somewhere where you can show your products off in the real world in well-taken photos or videos. And that's, that's an easy transition uh, into a, a secondary platform that's drawing traffic back towards your, your primary platform in the e-commerce space, right? Maybe you make products and that's a similar thing, right? Your primary platform might be a, a Pinterest or an Etsy uh, where you post the products that you make. And then your secondary one again is an Instagram or maybe even a YouTube where you show people how you make those products. Say you're a, a woodworker, right? You make kitchen tables or end, end tables or nightstands or whatever, you know, woodcraft, woodcrafted item that you might make you're still gonna have a platform that drives individuals to where they can purchase this. And there's a ton of creative platforms in and around those. Those could be podcasts and blogs where you talk about woodworking or write about woodworking and various strategies and you know how to create a miter joint, right? People are gonna find those and then be driven towards your product and discover that. And I know that's a little bit of a tangent and an aside, but you can see how it is powerful to identify your primary platform and what are your support platforms. And for me, I was stretched too thin. I was declaring far too many support platforms. I wasn't very sure where my primary platform was. It was torn between YouTube and Twitch. And even though I really, really, really love Twitch and I love the idea of becoming a Twitch streamer uh, and have that be a primary platform, that's just not where I am with this message and what I'm doing. And I, I think there's still some really exciting ways to use Twitch and to, you know, circle it back to this, this passion I have of, of helping people, but I'm not there yet. And so stay tuned for, you know, additional Twitch announcements and information. You still might catch random streams here and there. You're going to see a reduction on some of the other platforms. I'm still using Twitter to keep the conversation alive, answer questions. If people have them, I'll comment and join in. I still see Twitter as a great sort of networking platform where you can see ongoing conversations and jump in and start adding value and start having those communications or those conversations out in your industry of choice. LinkedIn is still a great uh, strategy for me and I'm probably gonna continue to post my videos out there under my business's page on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is full of finance uh, professionals and entrepreneurs and business professionals who will find this information valuable. I'm still going to do these things. It's just, I've had to realize, don't kill myself to make them happen is the important part here. Identify your platforms, identify your structure, know your limits and action on those. That's going to be my big message today. And hopefully that was helpful to hear for some where it's okay to fail. Even if you're just starting out, I mean, this channel right now doesn't have a ton of subscribers and I've already failed several times in the process of making this, making this platform of launching this thing. And that's okay. But with each of those failures, I've learned. I've learned just a little bit, either about myself, about my process, what I do and don't like to do. And some of it's, you gotta do it even if you don't like it. And that's fine as well, but just know that. Batch those activities. Like, hey, I hate these activities. I'm gonna do them all at once. So it's a rip the band-aid, swallow the frog, whatever analogy you wanna use to make it happen at the end of the day, it's not about motivation. It's about the discipline and understanding yourself and what you're actually trying to do. So again, thank you for hanging out today. Hopefully this was useful for those that are feeling overwhelmed, down, depressed, not only about the world around us and what's going on, but just simply about what they're trying to do and they just seem to constantly encounter failure or super excitement about something and then quickly finding disinterest in it that's okay it really is 
But in that process, you're going to learn a ton about yourself. And that's the important thing. So thank you for hanging out with me here today. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned to this channel. I'm posting uh, weekly videos or sometimes there's a break or two for a couple weeks like there just was. But I'm posting weekly videos out here talking all about technology and building your business in the digital realm with the hopes of lowering that barrier of entry into building your business, regardless of what it is out there on the internet. So until next time, take it easy. Consider hitting that subscribe button, that like button. It helps the channel a ton just to watch these videos. That's my only ask. Is come hang out with me, watch these videos, leave your comments below. I would love to respond to what your thoughts on failing and setting priorities and giving up when trying to build something you're passionate about. So leave those comments below. And until next time, as I already said, because I like to close this multiple times, apparently, we'll catch you next time. Take it easy.